We're going to talk a little bit for the next few minutes about bloodstream infections, BSI, bloodstream infections. And bloodstream inf infections over the last few decades have actually been on the rise with more than 350,000 reported over uh, a year's time. And uh, bloodstream infections are defined as pathogens in the blood found in patients that have been in the hospital for more than 48 hours. So they've been in the hospital for more than 48 hours. There's pathogens found in their blood and more than 350,000 of these cases of bloodstream infections uh, are found per year and it is on the rise, has been over the last several decades. Now when we think about bloodstream infections, there are two types to be kept in mind when they are discovered in the blood of the patient. First is primary infection. This basically is an infection in the blood that has been uh, introduced there through an intravascular device. So it may be related then to the IV or something that is intravascular and has um, been contaminated and therefore introduced the pathogen to the blood directly. This is primary infection. The second type of bloodstream infection is a secondary infection, meaning that there is infection elsewhere in the body, urinary infection, wound infection that is then spread systemically and ends up in the blood. And it needs to be determined which it is. If it's a uh, direct um, infection, a primary infection um, introduced from outside through an intervascular device, or perhaps um, it's a secondary infection that's been spread systemically because of infection in another part of the body. And that clearly needs to be determined first. Um, when you're diagnosing a bloodstream infection, the following four things need to be kept in mind. First, skin preparation. It's extremely important that there must be adequate measures taken to prevent contamination of the sample. So when you're taking the blood sample, please prepare the skin properly ahead of time to avoid uh, contaminating the sample and therefore skewing your results or perhaps getting a false positive. So to get a proper diagnosis, remember proper skin preparation. Two, uh, blood volume is the second thing you need to think of here. Make sure you have a sufficient quantity to test and find the pathogens there. Um, you need to ideally keep it between 10 and 20 milliliters in order to detect low concentrations of organisms. Three, you need to think about timing. As soon as there are symptoms of a bloodstream infection, you need to immediately get the sample in order to test it so that you can begin treating and dealing with it right away. So timing is critical. As soon as symptoms appear, you need to act as soon as possible. And then finally, uh, venipuncture. You need to draw your sample uh, not from the intravascular catheter that's already present, which may actually, because of a primary infection, be the very cause of the bloodstream infection, but you need to go peripherally to obtain your sample. So uh, in getting a proper diagnosis, prepare the skin, have the proper volume of blood to test, make sure you act right away, get the timing right, and then when you do draw, uh, with the venipuncture, make sure you get it peripherally and not from a intervascular catheter, which once again may be the cause of the bloodstream infection. Um, keeping these things in mind will be important for you to not only properly understand bloodstream infections, but to diagnose them properly. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, go to the link underneath this video, click there, it'll take you to a web page with uh, more information about this. And also on that web page, you'll find a link to an ebook that's ready for immediate download.